Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. In our speed test battle between Mobboy's latest premium wearable, the TicWatch Pro 5, and their previous top end offering, the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra. And no, there is no TicWatch Pro 4 because in Mobboy's home country of China, 4 is considered to be an unlucky number. Interesting. The Pro 5 is powered by Qualcomm's latest wearable SoC, the Snapdragon W5 Plus Gen 1. The Pro 3 Ultra is packing Qualcomm's previous flagship SoC, the Snapdragon 4100. And one of the ways Qualcomm is claiming that this new chipset will provide a better user experience over the old chipset is through increased performance and responsiveness. And that is exactly what we will be testing today. And if you want to know more about the other benefits of the Snapdragon W5 Plus Gen 1, there's a link to an entire video about that down in the description. Nice. All right, enough talk, let's test. So for this speed test battle, we are going to have both watches simultaneously perform a series of tasks. When one watch completes a task faster, it will receive a point. And if a task's completion is too close to call or within margin of error, a half a point will be awarded to each. As always with these type of tests, we are going to start with a boot up test and we will do this for two reasons. First, boot up speeds might be of some interest to some people, but probably more importantly, we do it to ensure no apps are sitting open in the background, which could potentially taint our results. Next, we are going to open some apps. Next, we will do a couple of downloads and installs from the Play Store. Now normally this is the part of the test where we would test the digital assistant on both watches, which in an ideal world would be the Google Assistant. But the TicWatch Pro 5 doesn't come with Google Assistant, you can't download it, and as of right now there's no timeline when it will get it. However the Pro 5 can at least use Amazon's Alexa so we can just use that instead. Right? No. Since the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra is still running a previous version of Wear OS, it can use Google Assistant, but for reasons unknown, it can't download and use Alexa. So for this assistant test, each watch will be using a different digital assistant, and while that is certainly not ideal for comparing the speed of the two chipsets, we can still at least get an idea of each watch's real-world performance. Set an alarm for 2.30 this afternoon. 2.30 p.m. Set. Yeah. What is the weather like in Sydney, Australia? Right now in Sydney, Australia, it's 46 degrees and clear. Thursday, it'll be mostly sunny, with a high of 64 and a low of 46. What is 1800 minus 99? 1800 minus 99 is 1701. Tell me a joke. What do you call a belt made of watches? A waste of time. How do you spell Rick Astley? Rick Astley is spelled R-I- Rick Astley is spelled R-I-C-K-L-A-S-T-L-E-Y. So at the end of the day, what have we learned? Well, if you just look at the data, you would conclude that the Pro 5 took the win here. But in reality, the results aren't that simple. The Pro 5 got most of its points when opening apps and during the assistant battle. But even though it was often faster during those tests, it usually was by less than a second. 
And then there's the connectivity issues, which the Pro 5 had repeatedly. And in my time using and reviewing the Pro 5 over the past month, I can tell you that this is indeed an ongoing issue, even after the latest software update. And finally, let's not forget that both watches are running different digital assistants, which makes the results of the assistant battle even more questionable. I think the big takeaway here is with the exception of the Pro 5's connectivity problems, both watches performed well. The Pro 3 Ultra was already a pretty snappy performer, so while the Pro 5 might not offer huge performance upgrades, both watches should still be able to provide a smooth and efficient experience. Just know that if you already have a Pro 3 or Pro 3 Ultra, while there may be some other reasons to upgrade to the Pro 5, a noticeable performance upgrade probably isn't one of them. Well, that's all the information I have for one day. If you have any experience with either of these high-end wearables, please feel free to share those experiences down in the comments so we can all learn from each other and continue to make more informed buying decisions. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.